Welcome back, my friends, to TFT Hyperor with Artar and the five builds you should know in order to climb to hyper tier this season. Now, if you want a whole story about why this video exists and everything else I think about set 12, you can use the chapters to get to the end of the video or just watch the whole thing. That's kind of cool, too. But let's jump right into the builds. And remember, these are designed to get you into the top four, not necessarily designed to win. There's a whole thing with that. Again, I'll talk about at the end. But we're going to start with just a straight vertical trait, and that is Frost. When deciding whether to go this trait, I look for an early Swain or an early Huey. In this case, thanks to the three champions, I got both of them. Let's talk about how this trait works. So what Frost does gives you a little bit of AD and AP, but most importantly, it's going to turn opponents that die into ice soldiers. In this case, it was a training dummy that will travel with the team, but the higher you get in Frost, the more opponents you're going to kill and turn into soldiers for your side. The keys to Frost are going to be Swain and Huey, so you want to try to get them both to gold three stars to have any real chance of winning. You're going to want to add in a little bit of Shapeshifter and a little bit of Blaster. That will help Way and that will help Swain. I personally recommend Shivana for the other Shapeshifter. And then throughout, you're going to use any Blaster. But in the end, you're going to want to get Smolder because that will end up triggering Dragon along with Shivana. Way is AP, so you want things like Blue Buff, Nastra's Tooth, Jeweled Gauntlet, those types of items. You're going to get... Olaf at one point, he is the four cost, and you're going to want to put AD items on him like Bloodthirst or Infinity Edge, stuff like that, but I don't like to rely on this comp in getting Olaf. If you happen to be able to put the items together on a blaster and switch them over to Olaf, that's great, but I rely much more on Huey and Swain to really get the job done. So your final build will look something like this with the seven frost, two dragon, two blasters, two hunters, and two shapeshifters. You can bring in Camille at the very end to just add a little bit of chrono to it. That will help a little bit. But I found this fairly consistently gets you into the top four. Winning this season, like I say, it really will take a three-star way to make that happen or just absolutely perfect circumstances but let's move on to our next build this one works really well in hyper roll because you can get all the elements together and it is portal scholar and you can get to eight portal and four scholars in stage 10 since zoe and rise are both portals and scholars you face a small conundrum in this one because your portal is going to get stronger if you can get the three-star champs, but you're going to need item holders early or else you're not really going to have a chance. So presuming you're not getting magnetic removers, you're going to have to use Zoe to hold on to the rise items, which means you don't want to take her up to three stars. Now there is a new augment this season called Vertically Inclined I find that to be fantastic for this particular build because in the end, you're only going to have two traits where a lot of the other builds are going to tick a lot of traits. With just Portal and Scholar, you're going to be doing 16% additional damage to the majority of teams. Once you find Rise, you want to make the swap as far as items go. The real critical one to me is Spear of Sojin. Then you either want more speed or just more power. You can go with a Rage Blade and something like that, or then Rabadon's Death Cab, Jeweled Gauntlet, etc. You kind of get the idea. Galio is likely to be your main tank early on. If you can get him up to three stars, great. If not, you're going to default over to Tarek as the next best tank alternative. Overall, though, Rise is going to be the one to carry this. So he needs to get to two stars and he needs to be fully itemized. As you can see, he does a lot of damage. And once you're at eight portals with a fully itemized Rise, you should find yourself pretty easily into the top four. This is the final build with the eight portal and four scholar. You're also going to have best friends because you need Yumi in this since that is going to be your final portal champion. So I guess it's three things. But still, this is a great build for hyper roll because it takes up the 10 slots with two very strong traits. But let's move on to our next build. This next one involves the summoning trait from this season, and that is Eldritch. And we're going to combine it with Multi Striker. And 
if you put this one together really well, you're going to actually end up involving a lot of traits, but you're using the Eldritch ultimately to hold things up while your multi-strikers are going to be doing the majority of the damage. And that's going to start with Ash, but she is just an item holder. Since the stretch goal for Eldritch requires three emblems or souls or however they're doing it, uh, you're not likely to get it so don't even think about it and you're gonna be bringing in a shapeshifter to pair with Elise Swain is my best choice for this make sure you pick up a second two star ash so that you can do the swap over to Callista for the items because that's who you're holding for gold three star ash just isn't going to cut it you're going to need Callista as the multi striker to bring this home and you are going to need a third multi-striker. That can be Hecram or Akali, depending on who you see enough of. But it takes three to tick that trait, so you're going to need one who's just kind of going to be in there, a little bit of a meat shield that will help your backline ultimately take over. Your Ash slash Callista items, because once you get Callista, she's in. I like Rageblade and then just damage intensifiers. You want her attacking really fast and then doing a lot of damage on her ult when she rends things back. As you can see, she just will do a ton of damage. This is one of those builds I like to have a golden remover for if possible because you will be switching tanks in and out. You'll be switching your carries in and out in terms of who gets what item. And so it's very helpful. If you end up bringing a Kali, you're going to be able to tick Warrior with Nyla. So that can be useful. It's not a huge buff, but it can help you get through some really close fights. But this is another one that once you kind of put together the 7-3 in terms of Eldritch and and multi-striker I tend to find it brings you into the top four now let's move over to our penultimate build which is kind of just a classic TFT formula tanky front line strong back line and this is bastion and blasters and as you likely guessed, it involves using bastion as your front line and then blasters as your back line I like to go with six Bastion and then four blasters. The trickiest thing I found about this build is that you're going to use Tristana as your item holder, but you don't want to pull Tristana out. You want Tristana to be one of your blasters because Tristana will also tick fairy along with Lilia. So I end up using Poppy as the item holder for tanks to come out later for Tarek. Tristana is going to be the item holder for Varus, but you're going to want to get an additional Tristana on the bench or magnetic remover so that you can switch items over to Varus. You generally want to put AD items on Varus and then AP items on Huey. Again, even though Tristana is slightly lower than Ezreal, because of Fairy, I would consider switching over to Smolder for Ezreal instead of Tristana, simply because that Fairy buff is going to be surprisingly strong and you'll see that right here because when you think there is no way this team is going to win a fight it's going to be Tristana who ultimately just does a ton of damage and finishes it off so for augments in this one unified resistance is really good because you're going to have a full front line of bastions but this new one called row rejuvenation is also pretty good that's going to give omni vamp to the entire team and an additional percent for every champion that's in the same row so if you have a big row of champions it's going to increase the omni vamp on your team i also want to talk about the items on tristana in this particular game i find spear of sojin to be very helpful because of how blaster works it's based on when the champions cast. So a blaster casting more often is going to do more damage. And once you get up to your four blasters, that will be a lot more damage. I don't recommend going to six as I find the four bastions are not enough to hold back other teams. You're pretty good at six, four. 
This one is also a fast start build, so expect to find yourself towards the top of the health charts through most of the match. I've also found a surprising lack of competition for this build, so you'll very often have it to yourself, unlike some of the other ones that I've given like Portals or Eldritch. Overall for Bastion and Blasters, and I have a hard time not saying Brawlers and Blasters because that's what it was so long ago, I find this to be a really good build to kind of have as the staple build that you look for and then if it's not there or other things present itself, go into them. But this feels as if it consistently gets into the top four, not necessarily wins unless you end up with something fantastic but it is very, very consistent and strong and will bring you, as I mentioned, into the top four. But let's get to our final and my favorite build. So if you end up with a shapeshifter emblem, this one is an absolute no brainer. It is shapeshifter dragon and it is exactly what it says. All the shapeshifters, all the dragons. Now, if I am confident that I'm going to be able to get to eight shapeshifters, then I like to use Shivana as the ultimate tank because she will be benefiting from multiple things, which is the dragon buff and then the eight shapeshifters. However, you can do this build with six. You just change it up a little and I'll show you that. But then you will tend to use Swain because he is overall a better tank unless Shivana is getting buffed and there are some dragon buff augments out there. This is another fast start build. So expect to be at the top of the health charts for a long time. You wanna focus primarily on building tank items on Shivana first, if you're going Shivana, if not it's Swain, but critical items are Warmogs and Dragon's Claw. Dragon's Claw really being the most important to me because that will keep her health up as she heals also as part of her attack. Look for augments like Keepers that will take advantage of health or even something like Final Ascension because that will take advantage of the fact that your matches are likely going to last for a long time. Once you get Smolder into this, having his damage get increased is going to help a ton, especially since then there will be three dragons. You are using Namzi as the item holder and generally you just keep a second Namzi on the bench so you can do an easy swap. Briar is your final shapeshifter so keep an eye on your health. You can feed her snacks so that it will benefit you. So if you're less than six, you can go all the way down to one. Say you're at 10 and you're losing six per round, you can go down to seven. That is one of the advantages of this build in Hyper Roll because you can know exactly how much you're going to lose and then feed Briar accordingly. Also, you're going to want to bring in Wukong as a final champ since you will have one extra space. But making it into the top four with this build seems really easy. I had already mentioned a bunch of augments, but in general, if you see Draconic Mastery, just take it give up whatever you were doing before and switch over to dragons because this will work really well even if you do not get a shapeshifter emblem. If you manage to get an early two-star Nasus, you want to move some items onto him such as Bloodthirster, Titan's Resolve, and any other tank item you can really get. The Heart Steel Steadfast Heart is a pretty good one, but Nasus can take a lot of damage and will heal a ton back when he does his Q, if you will. And you can see Smolder is just going to go around the outside of the board and tear things up, especially with that Dragon Boost. Overall, I have found this comp incredibly strong and every single time I tried it, it got me into the top four. Granted, it wasn't a huge sample size. I played just for one day to see what comps I felt would work and if they could get me into the top four fairly consistently, then they're in this video. Those are the top five that I found from that day and this is the day one patch. But this one was by far the most consistent of them and also just a lot of fun to play so those are the builds and if that's what you came for uh, i would i would i would click off now if you're interested in finding out my opinion of season 12 and how much i'm going to be playing it uh yeah that's coming up now so uh 
last chance to click away before we get into things. First off, the reason this video even exists is because I let somebody else use my PBE account and they kept getting messages from people who thought it was me and he had to explain that it wasn't me and they were like, can you please tell him? And he said it happened three or four different times and said that people really wanted to see a video about this next season. So I decided to spend Saturday and play through, record it and see what I could come up with. As for set 12, well, I made a music video that uh, Mort left this comment on. If you haven't seen the video, link is up above. And if you could do me a favor, leave a comment in this video with a link to about this spot saying, I can't believe Mort Dog left that comment in your video because it kind of sums up a lot of what I feel about set 12. I never suggested in that video that TFT was a dead game, it's just not a game I enjoyed playing anymore because it was all RNG based versus strategy based. This season takes it to the next level with Charm, and I suspect that's why Mort made that comment because he knew what was coming in this next set and couldn't argue with it. Charms can be game breaking. And not all of them, there are a lot of them that are just mild, but especially in Hyper Roll, when you're getting into the later rounds and all of a sudden you face a team that now has an Elder Dragon in it that joins their team, they may have an inferior build, but because they were lucky enough to get the Elder Dragon charm, they are able to use it against you, and now you're going to lose to them and potentially get knocked out. I had that happen a couple of times throughout the day, and at the same time, I also used it a couple of times when I had inferior builds. And once you're into the top four, and there are a couple of times you can sneak into the top four with not perfect builds, but once you're in there, it's Battle of the Charms. Whoever gets the better charm is going to have a huge advantage. In this case, Yordle Spirit is going to allow my team to pretty much escape damage for four seconds while still pouring it out. So Smolder is going to be able to do a lot of damage and that will help me win a fight that I otherwise may have lost because this is four seconds of me having free attacks and this is not a perfect set because my Smolder is not two stars yet. I really should not end up winning this fight, but those critical four seconds allows people to stay alive just a little bit longer and allows my champs in the back line to do just enough damage to finish them off. Minus that charm, I probably lose that fight. So I hope this video helped and helps you climb up to hyper tier and as always have an absolutely, absolutely awesome day.